Okay, we'll do our warm ups and a little, throw a little bit of everything maybe. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, sitting bones down, hips open. Keep those shoulders back and down and activate your core to get those bottom ribs towards your spine and up and just feel that area get a little bit more supportive for your spine. Arms hanging at your sides, just reach your crown toward the ceiling and don't forget to breathe. So do that inner focus on your yoga perspective on what's going on internally for you. And then inhaling, arms are reaching out. Hands to your heart. Stretch out to the front, keep those shoulders down. And then hands behind you, clasp the fingers and press them toward the floor. Stretch up with your heart and back with your head. And then pivot at your hips as you exhale, come on over. Bring your hands up and your head down. Move your neck around a little bit. Release any tension through your back. Knees bent, ribs up, sitting bones down. Wind from the bottom of the spine to the top and lift your heart. And again, head back, but remember, don't crunch your neck too much, so don't really fling it back, just stretch it back. And heart up. Keep breathing. On an inhalation, come on up, release your arms, and just take a moment, feeling all that energy. And again, arms are reaching out, hands to your heart, stretch to the front, Exhale, hands behind you, clasp the opposite way, and lift your heart, stretch back, pivot over, and exhale into that forward bend as deep as you like. Move your chin in toward your chest, make your neck stretch maybe a little bit more. Hands toward your head for those shoulders. And then with your knees slightly bent and your chin in, wind from the bottom up. And again, a nice heart high, upper body back thing. Toes spreading, spine stretching. And on an inhalation, come on up, releasing back into mountain pose. Just feel that stability. And arms out, palms toward the ceiling. Hands above your shoulders, pass, turn around, and clasp them. Arms by your ears, shoulders jam, sitting bones jam, ribs in and up, and no twisting, lean to the side. So don't lean that shoulder forward, just lean over. Press the foot you're leaning away from down for that extra stretch. And then back to the center and switch your hands. And again, right next to your ears with your arms and stretch and keep those shoulders jammed and just lean over to the other side. Maximize as much as you'd like on this side. Keep breathing. And again, inhale to the top, release back to mountain pose. So a little bit more work through the spine and along your sides. And we'll do our twist. Arms out. Palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders, and clasp your elbows. Lengthen up, stretching your spine, and exhale into the twist. Another breath in, and exhale over. Just take a few breaths there. Lift your sitting bones. Keep the weight on both feet. Keep your arms next to your ears. Don't forget to breathe. And then on your next inhalation, work your way back up, stay in your twist and lift your heart. And again, upper body back bend, always really gentle when you're twisted on that lower back. Take a breath, chest high, elbows back. Inhale to the top, exhale around to the center and switch your arms around, get everything balanced. And again, stretch the spine apart, exhale, and twist the other way. Another breath in, and exhale, over. So just relax, lift the sitting bones, take a moment to breathe. 
And again, on an inhalation, work up into the back bend in the upper back, not the lower back. Elbows back and chest up. Take a few breaths there. Just feel your body. And then inhale and come up. Exhale around to the center. Keep the shoulders down. Extend those arms right straight above your shoulders. And then let's swan dive. So come on forward with those arms reaching out. Stretch and straighten and drop into right leg. And again, just hang for a few breaths there. Tuck in your chin maybe. Stretch the back of your neck a little more. Pull in with your hands behind your legs if you love it. On that stretch on your lower back. And then arms back to the front, knees slightly bent, and again, wind your way all the way up and into mountain pose. As you get there, just take a moment again, feeling that spine more activated. And let's bring your hands behind on the back of your body so that your fingertips go down. Pull your elbows toward each other, expand across the heart. And then keep your hips right above your ankles and look overhead. So a little upper body back bend again, supporting your lower back. Elbows more toward each other. It keeps that heart and chest area nice and open. Keep stretching your head back, not flinging it back. And so your chin's a little bit toward your heart, but not too much. And then bring the chin further forward and come on back up. Release your arms. And again, just feel a little bit more stimulation from that back bend. And we'll do our pelvic tilts. So remember, angle the toes out the same direction your knees go. So your whole legs turn as you do that. And then bend your knees toward your toes, but not beyond. Hands above your knees and position your shoulders above your toes. So starting with your spine nice and straight, and then sink into the back bend. So push your sitting bones back and chest forward. Get a nice back bend there through your whole spine. And then draw the ribs back, tuck the sitting bones down and forward, and tuck your chin toward your chest just a little bit. And remember, you're not pressing into your knees, they're just positioning so that your shoulders stay above your toes. Inhaling into the back bend, exhaling into the forward bend. And just feel the contraction through the midsection as you go into that forward bend. Feel the expansion across your heart as you go into the back bend. And just through your whole body, feel that hip and pelvis area keep moving through its range of motion. Feel your lungs expanding and contracting with your breathing. And feel the whole spine working all the way along from the sitting bones, tailbone, all the way up to the base of the skull and crown. And then as you get that whole back of your body really working and stimulated on your next forward position, just Pause and stand and return to mountain pose. Just take a few moments there, feeling your body a little bit more stimulated. So we'll reach up and swan dive forward again and come all the way down to transition to the floor in child's pose. Hips on your heels, hands, palms up, forehead toward the floor. Just take a few moments there, get a good stretch on your back, and relax. So knees together, lower back gets more stretch, knees apart, easier to breathe. So your choice, always. And as you inhale, come on all the way up and into staff position, legs out in front. Press out through the bottoms of your feet, toes pulling back, knees, up toward the ceiling, sitting bones maybe a little behind you, so get that positioning so that everything's nice and stacked through the spine. So remember, you can pad if you need to or fold up your mat. Shoulders stay down, ribs in, and crown to the ceiling. 
And then bend one knee, put the foot on the other thigh, and let the knee come down toward the floor on that bent leg. You can put your hand there for weight, but don't press. You just want to release and relax through that hip area. I'm going to do a little bit of hip work today, so just relax it. Keep breathing. And remember, if it's really tight, you can always move this leg over to the side. Knee and toes stay up. So again, just letting that knee come down, warming things up. And then for the hip rotator, hold on or pull in with your arms around the leg and move back and forth, feeling that hip joint, hip rotator getting a little bit more lubricated and warmed up. If you love it and it's working, you can go higher or closer and that makes it more intense. But remember, you don't have to do that if that's not right for your body. Personal practice in yoga always. And then release that one and feel the difference. So of course we need to balance and do the other way. So bring that opposite foot up, knee out to the side, see which one is working better or you know, tighter. Bodies are always different on each side. You can bring that leg over to the side or keep it in the front, your choice. And remember, you can always pad under it too if it's getting too much on one particular side or the other. And again, hand on the knee if you want to let add a little weight, but don't press. We don't want to really stress and strain. We want things to relax because that's when the muscles are more willing to be stretched and flexible. So just breathe, release any tension. Keep those sitting bones behind you, that pelvis nice and open so that that whole leg area, hip area can relax. And when you're ready to do the hip rotator, bring it in, holding on or wrapping around. Just move back and forth side to side and let that hip get more movement in that outer part of your hip joint rotator area. And again, you can maximize it or not, always personal choice. And again, releasing that back into staff position, just feel your hips and your legs. And we'll just do a little sitting practice so bring one foot up to the inner thigh. Let's do the right foot to your inner thigh and the knee out to the side. And then take your other foot and there's a triangle that you just formed at the top. Put the other foot up toward that triangle. And you'll feel your body kind of shift a little bit. This is called perfect posture because it really helps when you're sitting on the floor to keep your spine nice and straight. So. I call this the multitasking watching TV position because you can sit on the floor watching TV in this position for longer periods of time and still be comfortable. So I recommend that multitasking if you can do that anytime you want to. But we're going to do this to the other side as well, just to balance things out. So bring your body back into staff position. And bring that other foot up to the thigh, knee out to the side, forming your triangle. And put your foot into that space and just let those knees come in. So it kind of pushes your sitting bones a little bit back, giving you that nice pelvic opening and a very comfortable seated position on the floor for most people. So just take a moment to experiment with that, see which side you like. And remember when you're watching TV multitasking with your yoga pose, you can always sit longer, but be sure to do both sides to balance your body. And then we're gonna do another, a little bit more intense workout. So it's called cow's head pose. And if the leg position gets too much for you, just go into a cross leg position. But as we do the legs position, it'll feel tight, especially in that outside of your hip first. That's why we warmed up. But while we're doing it and we work the arms afterwards, it'll release a little bit more. So just kind of notice that. 
So bend your right knee and put it straight out to the front with your knee, your heel over near your hip, opposite hip. So it's tight. It can be that heel can be out further if it needs to be. It's you know, whatever's right for your body. And then the other knee goes right on top as much as you can. And they won't probably meet. I've only seen one person that was flexible enough that their knees were one right on top of the other. So don't worry if your knees are really far apart. Mine don't go anywhere close. Heels across from each other. So as close toward your hips as you can, but they can be further out if that's more comfortable for your body. And just notice one hip may be, one sitting bone may be up a little more than the other. Don't worry too much about that. So we've got the, I've got the left knee on top. So we're going to take the right arm out to the side. So opposite arm out, palm up, arm right above your shoulder. Bend your elbow, bring that hand in close to your neck, down your spine. And then take your other hand and push the elbow in toward the middle of your body, spine line and have those fingers just go straight down along your spine. Take your other hand and wrap it around and see if you can clasp your hands behind you. And if not, just hold your shirt. Or if you've got a strap, you can hold a strap or a belt in the upper hand and work them along that belt or strap to bring them closer. So go ahead and stretch the elbows away from each other and pull them in toward your spine. And as you're doing all that work with your arms, just kind of notice that your hips are relaxing a little bit. So you may be getting a little bit more comfortable in that seated position. Make sure you're not pushing your head forward. So push your head back into your arm and make sure that spine stays nice and straight. Don't forget to keep breathing. The more you... Exhale and relax, the more things release a little bit, especially through those hips and shoulders. And then, of course, on your own, you can hold this longer, but we're not going to, we're just sampling. So unwind, feel the shoulders, and go ahead and unwind your legs back into staff position and feel all that's going on there. And of course, we have to balance the body and do the same thing the opposite way. So we're going to bend the left knee first or whatever was your opposite for you. So heel back near that hip, get comfortable as much as you can, and then bend that other knee and bring the heel in and try and stack the knees as much one above the other as you can. And again, sink those sitting bones kind of evenly toward the floor. Breathe, relax as much as you can. It's a really tense and tight position, so just you know, ease off if you need to. And then left arm out or opposite from the top, knee out. Palm up, arm above your shoulder. Keep those shoulders down, remember. Core still activated, spine straight. Bend your elbow, fingers going down toward your neck, and then pull that elbow in more. And slide the fingers straight down your spine. Wrap around. See if you are clasping on this side. One may be easier than the other. Or you may just do one. Or you may do neither. Don't worry. Just do what's right for your body. And remember, you can always just hold your shirt and work those hands toward each other. Or if you've got that strap or tie, that works as well. So take a moment and breathe. Keep the head pushing back into the arms and the arms, the elbows pulling toward your spine and then stretching away from each other. So the one up goes up, the one down goes toward the floor. Take a breath. Just kind of relax into it as much as you can. Yeah, it's probably tight. Just breathe. Exhale tension and release. Feel all that release through the upper body. And oh yeah, let's release those legs as well. And feel everything getting a little bit more easy as you're in that position. And then let's take the feet to the end of the mat and slowly roll 
on down for a nice little integrated relaxation there. Breathing, let your body just sink into that surface beneath your shoulders toward the floor, hands, palms up. And then a little roll in at the top of the thighs so the knees and toes are straight up. Press the sitting bones toward your heels and press your back down. Draw those heels in right near your sitting bones, knees straight up to the ceiling. So remember, we don't want the knees spreading apart. So keep that roll in at the top of the thighs to keep those knees straight up and those feet flat on the floor. I'm gonna work the low back just gently. So press your back down so your whole spine connects to the floor. The sitting bones will slide slightly toward your heels. You can have your hands, palms up or down near your sides and let those shoulders drop into the floor. And then as you inhale, lift your ribs, slide those sitting bones back and down into the mat. So from your shoulder blades, to your sitting bones, you're arched up and there's a space under your back as much or as little as your body likes. Now we're gonna rotate through that. So exhaling, sinking, pressing down, feeling that core contract just a little bit, and then inhaling, lifting the ribs and getting that back bend arch. So this is a strengthener for the low back. It's actually a physical therapy exercise and it will build and strengthen those low back muscles as well as those core muscles. So just go ahead through your range of motion. You can maximize and really arch up, or you can just be gentle if that's important for your lower back. Remember, personal practice. So just breathe, exhale in tension, letting things just move through as comfortably for you as possible. So just breathing with it, inhaling as you pull up ribs toward the ceiling, exhaling as you contract through that core. So fast or slow, remember all those personal practice, doing what's right for your breath and your body. And then just come back to a neutral position. Bring your arms out to T position. Palms toward the floor, shoulders down, press your back down, lift your feet off the floor, and with your knees bent right above your hips, we'll do our twist. So bring your knees to one side, right at hip level, and turn your head toward that opposite arm. So remember, knees down toward the floor, you can pad under them or keep your feet on the floor for a little support if that lower back needs gentleness. You can keep those shoulders down for that middle back twist. And only turn your head as far as it's comfortable for your neck, for that upper back neck area twist. So breathe, just relax. The more you emphasize the exhalations, remember, the more that ligament along your spine area releases, and the more those knees will go down and your shoulders will stay on the floor. So just maximize or minimize if you love the low back twist and you're going, oh, this really, I don't feel much. You can bring those knees up toward your elbow and that'll give you a little bit more in that low back area if you love it. But don't go there if it's not right for you. And then when you're ready to release, heels toward your hips, just roll onto your back. Readjust, you can bring your feet to the floor if you need to and straighten. And we're going to go to the other side. So again, knees right above your hips, feet off the floor, and roll the knees to that opposite side, head turning toward the arm now behind you. Take a few breaths there. Exhale and relaxing. Same cautions as the other side. Do what's right for your body. Those of you loving it and wanting more for that lower back, remember, knees up toward your elbow as you're in that position. Keep those shoulders, shoulder blades down, that middle back twist really maximizes if you keep those shoulders down. And don't forget to turn your head for your neck area as much or as little as your neck is willing to go. 
Don't forget to breathe. And again, go only as far as what's right for your body. Breathing deep, letting the tension out. And when you're ready to release, heels toward your hips, rolling onto your back, and bring your feet down to the floor. Straighten these back, slide those legs out along the floor, and bring your hands, palms up at your sides, into corpse position for your relaxation. If you want a little bit more hip work, slide the sitting bones toward your heels, and bring the bottoms of your feet together into butterfly position with those legs going out toward the sides. And again, you can have your hands still, palms up near your hips, shoulders down. So if you're in that butterfly position with your legs, at any time it gets too much while we're relaxing, just bring those knees together and slide out into a full corpse position. If you want a little bit more for your arms, you can bring them out to T position and then bend the elbows with those hands along the floor so that you're going perpendicular into that goddess position with your arms. So that Hips are open in butterfly and the arms are up in goddess pose, if you like. And then relax your body. So whether you're in corpse position or goddess position, just take a breath. And exhale, letting your muscles release in the position that you're in. Take a few breaths. If you're in goddess and you change your mind, remember always just go into corpse position and release. So scan through your body, let everything soften and sink. Breathe deep. Let the thoughts of your body release from your awareness, just allowing everything to sink into that earth embrace. Deep breaths in, just releasing and relaxing. And as your body releases into the earth's support, just allow your mind to release thoughts of your body. No need to think about any tightness, just let it go. And as thoughts of your body release from your awareness, other thoughts will come to your mind. Just let them go as well. Breathe deep. Let the thoughts drift away on your breath. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. No need to think about your body or anything else. Just let the thoughts go. And as your thoughts drift away easily and your body relaxes down into the earth, just allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind. Turn your awareness inward. Find that peace within. Fill your body with peace. Fill your mind with peace. And just take a few moments being peace. And if you have time today to keep relaxing longer, 
Feel free to relax as long as you are willing and able. And if it's time for you to reactivate for the rest of your day, just begin breathing more deeply, moving your body gently as you draw energy and awareness in with your breath. If you're still in goddess pose, draw those knees toward each other and stretch them out along the floor. Take a moment to breathe and relax as you begin moving everything gently, however it feels good for you to do. And when you're ready for that final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones toward your heels, heels coming up toward your hips, and then pull your knees toward your heart as far as you can. Wrap your arms around, give yourself that good appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, feet to the floor, roll over to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.